Okay, everybody, this is the lecture that you've all been waiting for. This is where we're finally able to combine the stuff we've been talking about in terms of distributions with the stuff that we had originally talked about. So let's go over the stuff we had originally talked about since that was a while ago. So generally speaking, we're interested in some parameter of a population. So this population could be um, parents in the United States. And let's see, the parameter of interest might be uh, their number of children. So the average number of children of parents in the United States. So what we said was, hey, we could take a sample and it doesn't, n could be 20. We could take a sample of 20 individuals as long as it's a random sample. We could calculate their average number of children. And based on the plug-in principle, this would be the best estimate for the above population parameter. Again, we don't know how good this estimate is. It could be pretty bad, but it's the best one we can come up with. So what's interesting about this? Something that's very interesting about this is that there's many, many different ways to get a random sample of 20 people in the United States. You can imagine a sample of 20 people in the United States that have 10 children, or a sample that have 20 children, or a sample that has no children if they're all young couples. So, in fact, theta hat isn't just a single number, but it's a ton of realizations, or it could possibly be. So one of the realizations could be 1.1. This is a group of 20 people that on average have 1.1 kids. Um, another group that has zero. Another group that has 3.2. Um, another group that has uh, four. That's a big number. Another group that has 1.3. And then uh, that's enough. So what do we have here? This is like a data set. It's a list of potential outcomes that our random sample estimator could be. So let's go ahead and plot them as we'd done before. So you'd say the random or the number of children can probably range anywhere between zero and five. Let's, let's go with. Um, so we've got one at 1.1, so something here. Uh, one at zero, okay, something here. One at 3.2, uh, another one at four. Uh, which we can just put on top of the 3.2. They can be stacked together. And then one at 1.3, right here. Okay, so we have a distribution of the sample estimator, which is the average number of children that a random sample of 20 people of parents in the United States, average number of children would be. Whew. It's pretty complicated. But hopefully we've been walking through this slowly enough such that it does make sense. Now, we talked about some interesting things about distributions, and I just want to go over it very, very briefly here. So in the above example, we have n equals, in this case, big N equals five. So we've taken five samples from our population, and these samples have 20 people each. So in total, we had to talk to 100 people. But let's say we could do one up. Let's say we could get n equals infinity, as we talked about before. In this case, this would give us the true population or the true distribution of this parameter or of these outcomes. So it might look something like this. If we have the true uh, distribution of these outcomes, we can ask very interesting questions. So for example, this might go from one to five. We might ask the question, hey, what is the chance that we draw a random sample from the population such that the parents would have more than 2.5 children. And the only thing we'd have to do is sum the area under this part of the curve, as long as this is 2.5. Okay, I'm hoping you're starting to see the possibilities here, but you should now know how we combine the previous work we were doing with random samples and sample estimators with distributions. Next time we'll show you how to use these to great effect, so stay tuned.